Farm Bureau helps protect its members in more ways than you might think. They've always been the voice of agriculture in Arkansas, working on behalf of folks like me when nobody else would. And Farm Bureau stands for the values that Arkansas families care about. They protected my right to farm and make a living, which helps everybody who likes food on the table. You know what they say, Arkansas counts on agriculture, and agriculture counts on Farm Bureau. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to Capital View. I'm Roby Brock. And I'm David Goins with the government shutdown in D.C. Theoretically in our rearview mirror now, at least for a few months, the nationwide focus now shifts to the rollout of the federal health care exchanges. And that process continues to see major bumps in the road. It's for that reason that many Republicans, including former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, say it was a bad idea to take the focus away from Obamacare. Here's part of my conversation with Governor Mike Huckabee. You've, uh, you've said recently that you thought that uh, the, the Republicans at the national level uh, basically made a stupid tactical blunder in this whole debt ceiling, um, federal government shutdown debate. Um, do you think that we're going to relive all of this once again in January and February when these debates come back to the forefront again? You know, I hope not. I hope maybe somebody learned something from it all. Uh, one of the tragedies of that for the Republicans was that um, the center of the stage, October 1st, should have and would have been exclusively about Obamacare. That's what it should have been about, about how rocky the launch was and how flawed the assumptions were about the financials to make it work. Uh, I think it would have been a tough, tough year for the Democrats in 2014 trying to defend Obamacare with more people losing insurance than getting it. And that could have been the referendum that the Republicans could have ridden all the way through the 14 elections. They took the noose from around the Democrats' necks and they turned it into a rescue rope and pulled them out of the hole and said, oh, let's not talk about Obamacare, let's make shut down the focus. And in that situation, they should have known that it doesn't matter whether it was their fault, it really wasn't technically their fault, it was as much Obama who refused to negotiate anything and was very obstinate about that. But the point is, the press is going to give the Republicans most of the blame for it, which they did, as did the public. And 74% of Americans, you know, after that whole process, thought the Republicans were responsible and had a dis, uh, an unfavorable view of them. That, that, you don't do things like that if you're, if you're trying to win elections. So do we relive that debate again in, in January and February when the debt ceiling and the, and the budget come to the forefront again? You know, we could. And I think one thing that's got to happen is Republicans need to be, they need to be more circumspect. And, the, the, you know, this is not a time to go just throw grenades at the president. This is a time to, in essence, force his leadership. You don't do that by raising the rhetoric. You do it by basically being quiet and saying, Mr. President, uh, we want to have a financial responsibility. Present something to us. You know, make him defend his position. Make him defend his no negotiation posture. Uh, what they did, that they created the argument about themselves. It was, a, again, a, I think a tactical blunder. Uh, if you have the ball, the worst thing you want to do is hand it to your opponent and put him in a position to score. You want to, you want to, you want to be on offense and make them play defense, and that's exactly not what we did. I hope they learn from it. Uh, it's the president's responsibility, just as it would be a governor's responsibility, to set the table, put the menu out, and then you know you're not going to get it all like you want, but you've got to start the discussion. And this president has been one that doesn't want to start it. Uh, he just wants to stop it by saying, I'll give nothing. You can't do that. Some pretty harsh words there for the president as well as I'll the both, Republican yeah. Party. Yeah, I also asked Governor Huckabee about the splits we're seeing in the Republican Party at the national level. And here's what he had to say. I think right now it's pretty big. And uh, this tragedy is that you have a lot of competing interests, all who say they want the same thing, which is a Republican majority, but you don't get a Republican majority by making it easier for the Democrats to win. I mean, to me, this is not real complicated. If you want to be Democrats, you spend money to defeat them, not to try to defeat Republicans who may not be perfect, uh, but they're going to be closer to your point of view than any of the Democrats you're going to be spending money on. And that, that just is, uh, I, I think a lot of it is the naivete of people who may not understand that politics is a process, it's not an event. You know, I wish it was an event. It'd be real easy then. You just make it all happen on one day and bang, you're done. But 
people who succeed in politics look at it as a long-term process, not as a short-term event. And the impatience and the petulance of people who just want to go out and, quote, take a stand, throw the grenade, uh, thinking that that's all there is to it. Um, you know, I, I've got a bass boat. I can turn that bass boat in the Arkansas River in just a few feet of water. I can, you know, throttle that thing down, crank the wheel, and it'll dig in, and it'll turn almost on a dime. You take one of these big barges out in the Arkansas River that's got, uh, you know, it's being pushed by uh, maybe a, a big tow boat, and it's got four or five long barges. You want to turn that around? You've got to be planning miles and miles ahead, and you've got to find a wide spot in the river if you're going to turn that thing around. And I think sometimes we look at politics and we think it's a bass boat. It's, it's a whole bunch of barges strung together, and that's the only way you turn it around. Too much purity, not enough compromise? Yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, uh, purity is, is, a, is a great thing for the campaign. You can be absolutely pure when you campaign. By the way, you can be absolutely pure when you do a talk show. You know, when I do radio or television, I'm a purist. You know, I don't have to be pragmatic. Um, you know, I can take a stand. I never have to be responsible for the consequences. I, I can be extremely ideological. I can be smug about it. That's easy. When you're in office, then you have to understand that unless you own all the moving parts, you better be prepared to give and take. You better be prepared to also build relationships and understand that if you don't win everything today, that's okay. Just make sure that you live to uh, fight another day. Make sure that you don't burn so many relationships and bridges that the person who is adamantly opposed to you on a bill today may be your partner in one next week. And we are not done with Governor Huckabee. When we come back, we'll be talking state-level politics, why Huckabee thinks the state has shifted from blue to red since he was in office. I'm David Goins alongside Ruby Brock. You have the Capitol View on Sunday morning on KARK. The Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to Capital View. I'm David Goins. And I'm Roby Brock. The political landscape in Arkansas has changed dramatically since Mike Huckabee was the state's governor. At nearly every level, Republicans have seen some sort of dominance, a major switch from years past at the local to the state to the federal level. I asked Governor Huckabee why he thinks that wasn't the case when he was in office. Let's take a look. There are a lot of reasons. I mean, uh, we, we saw a lot of the beginnings. When I first went into office, we had 11 Republicans in the House. We ended up with 30. We had four in the Senate. We had eight by the time I left. Uh, you know, those were gains, but what was really happening, we started seeing the, the building grounds on, I think, the local level. That's where it really happens. Quorum courts, city councils, people running for sheriff. Uh, the, the groundswell, I think, happened when the National Democratic Party made such a sharp left turn and left so many Arkansas Democrats behind. You know, the traditional Arkansas Democrat is not a hardcore liberal. Uh, one of the reasons I was able to work with a lot of people in the legislature, they were Democrats. But, but they weren't Nancy Pelosi, they weren't Harry Reid, they weren't Chuck Schumer, they weren't Dick Durbin. You know, they were more like the old Sam Nunn kind of Democrat. And, and that's a very different kind of Democrat than Barack Obama and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. And I think, you know, Barack Obama singularly did more to recruit members for the Republican Party in Arkansas than any Republican ever could. And, and let me be very adamant about this. It had nothing to do with his race. That, that's nonsense. You don't think that that even had no. anything to do with it at all? I, maybe for the most minute numbers of people, but you know, the truth is I celebrated the fact that an African American was elected president. I thought that was a great moment for America, not a great moment for Republicans. And I said so publicly, immediately after the election. So you know, I'm on record as saying 
This is a, a great step forward for the country in terms of race relations. Uh, but then I, I've looked over the past four years and so many people have said, oh, it's all about race, it's all about race. Well, you know what, if it is, then that's really an insult to Barack Obama. That's an insult to say that he really wasn't elected president because he uh, campaigned with an effective dream. Uh, he was just elected because of his race. That's his racism as much racism as it is to say that people are opposed to him because of racism. They're opposed to him because he spends money we don't have, he borrows money we can't afford to pay back, he's been utterly disingenuous about so many of the aspects of his administration, saying he's going to be transparent, open, accountable, and we've seen none of the above. We don't have answers on Fast and Furious, on Benghazi, why the IRS, he's always going to get to the bottom of something, we never get to the top. Uh, the debacle with Obamacare, that's why people are opposed to him. It's not his color. 2016, you floated the possibility that you have been talked to, you are considering a potential run for president once again. Give me the definitive statement. Where are you today in that decision process? Well, there's not a definitive statement. The definitive statement is, you know, that I haven't ruled anything out, uh, but I've not made a decision. You know, I'm talking to people around the country. I'm kind of weighing what, what the options are. It may not be a good time for me, you know, and I recognize it. My, my time may have passed, or maybe the environment is such that for a, a what I consider to be a hardcore conservative, but who's pragmatic, maybe there's no room for me. I understand that, but maybe there is. Maybe there will be a hunger for somebody who believes that the ultimate art of governing is about maintaining your own philosophical uh, consistency, but at recognizing that to get there, you still have to govern within the context of the numbers that exist. And you have to work with people who don't agree with you. And that's part of the art of it. Frankly, it's, it's the most difficult part. It's also the most rewarding and fulfilling part. It's when you can see something accomplished that you realize, nah, it's not exactly the way I wanted it, but it got done. And something improved, something changed, whether it's an education initiative, a, a highway initiative, and I'm thinking of those at the state level, but even at the national level. If there's something that you can visualize getting accomplished and look back on it and know that you, know, you were able to persuade not just the American people, but people on the other side of the political fence to join with you in that effort, I think that's what the founders intended. They never expected that anyone would get everything they wanted. In fact, they designed the system, intentionally designed the system, so nobody could become that powerful and get everything they wanted. So, at this point, we don't know what his plan is. Is he running or is he not running? I don't think he's going to tell you in 2013 what he's doing <laughs> in three years, much less probably in three months, right? Yeah, I don't think so either. But I can tell you from the way he talked uh, to the group at the Political Animals Club, what he said in that interview, and the fact that he is being so blunt about mm -hmm. being direct about the, the challenges in the Republican Party, I think he would have a tough time uniting yeah. uh, the Republican base if he were to run. So I think he can say those things because he's liberated enough that he probably knows in the back of his mind he won't run. Well, and you kind of wonder how long can anyone be technically out of at least the elected political light. Obviously, he has his radio show, television show. Uh, nationally, he still has you know a lot of traction. But by the time you get to 2016, it'll be 10 years since he served elected office. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting yeah. to watch. Interesting. Well, when we come back nearly 100 years after its completion, Arkansas State Capitol getting a facelift will show you the major undertaking needed to make the symbol of state government beautiful. I'm David Goins alongside Roby Brock. You're watching Capitol View on this Sunday morning on KRK.